no muffled drum proclaims today, the gallant soldiers fall. We should their deeds recall. I must tell you, I recall all of those deeds. I remember the haunting time of 1863. I, Martin Rice, was a resident of Lone Jack. But I was loyal to the Union, while my neighbors, for the most part, were not. They, however, respected me. They chose me to go into Kansas City and demand that General Ewing not issue those horrific orders. He had issued order number nine and 10, which made everybody who was quote unquote disloyal leave their land. It was intolerable. But what I found to be the most horrific experience was what followed. I believe it was about the 20th of August. An old man Potter had a cavalcade of gorillas I know Quantrill was there because I could see it. See, he and all these men, but what we didn't know is that they were en route to Lawrence, Kansas to completely annihilate that entire town. Some would say it was a good decision to destroy it. Others would not. At the end of the day, Quantrill brought hell to Lawrence and brought terror and hair horrific hell to our area because as a result of Quantrill's raid on Lawrence, order number 11 was inflicted upon us. We all had to leave. I had to leave. I went to Pleasant Hill and I obtained a loyalty oath as I was required to from the provost marshal from me, my family, my son Isaac. On September 6th, that day that is seared in my brain like hell, my son and I my son-in-law, Tate, the two hunter boys, old man Potter, the Owsley kid who was only 17 years old. We were all arrested on the Roop Farm, the Ninth Cav under Coleman. They arrested us. But when they saw that I had the loyalty oath, they allowed my son and I to leave. We had not traveled half a mile to three quarters of a mile when we heard the reports of the guns. I was naive. I thought perhaps they were just shooting foul in the sky. But that was not the case. No, it was not the case. They killed them all. All six of those men. Oh, man, Hunter buried his two sons. I buried my son-in-law. We buried Mr. Potter, the old man himself, and the grandson, Owsley. All six of them. In a grave buried in their blood-stained clothes, covered with nothing more than a blanket. And we had to leave. Years later, they blamed me because my son Isaac and I escaped and were allowed to go free. We were loyal to our family. I would have done nothing to harm my son-in-law, old man Potter, or any of the rest. May they rest in peace. I, thank God, was able to live to the ripe old age of 89. And every one of my fruit trees in Lone Jack are my progeny today.